Hi everyone and welcome back to Prefusion. Just hold on a second. Let me put this mic here. Yeah, welcome back to Prefusion. So today we'll be starting the lecture six of Engineering Mathematics chapter, where we'll learn about system of linear equations. We have already uh, given a brief about this in the first lecture, but here we'll learn more about system of linear equations and how to solve those linear equations. Okay, uh, there are mainly uh, four methods which i will tell you but mainly we'll solve using the three methods and the fourth method is a uh, different method that i will uh, only just uh, give you a brief overview of what it does then we'll also understand the consistency of solutions what do you mean by consistency of solutions like basically infinite no solution and unique solution that is what this means okay then we will understand the row echelon form what does row echelon form means and why do we need to convert a matrix into row echelon form okay and through here we'll understand the concept of rank also so many things we learn in this uh, lecture but before starting i want to go back to uh, like the previous lecture where i was telling the properties of a uh, hermitian matrix so when i was talking about the properties of a hermitian matrix there uh, if you recall correctly here right i i stopped that about this product right uh, the product of two matrices is also hermitian but uh, there was a mistake over here i have rewritten the uh, statement the product of two hermitian matrix a and b is hermitian if and only if a b sorry if and only if a b equals to b a okay both of them are a, a times b equals to b times a then only a and b will be hermitian okay so yeah basically both of them has, have to be square matrices also so a and b have to be square matrices same order basically same order okay and square matrices obviously now here what does this mean like let like i have given you the proof c equals to a times b then if i like a hermitian is a because it is a hermitian matrix and b hermitian is b okay then if i take the hermitian on, on both sides of this whole ab then what will happen it will be simply swap right that reversal law will again take over here so this will become b hermitian a hermitian which is equals to b and a okay so ba equals to ab equals to c okay so basically c hermitian equals to c hence uh, this uh, product is also hermitian matrix okay and the inverse of a hermitian matrix will also be a hermitian matrix because the adjoint will also be a hermitian matrix okay if a, a is hermitian so like this is one thing i wanted to clear like if uh, for some reason like i like i write the points and then also i have to cross verify right sometimes i forgot to cross verify or cross proof so it happens so i, I try to put that in the notes itself if i miss in the in this video lecture itself i will try to put that in the notes itself. or you can ask me in the uh, doubt section okay uh, I, I will i will try to answer that your doubts okay so yeah let's now start our lecture so uh, we were here right so what are the different solution methods so the different solution methods the first one is the kramer's rule so i think you have said if you have uh, studied 11 and 12 you know what a kramer's rule is you can simply find the unknowns to this kramer's rule i will explain this okay this simply also known as the method of determinants method of determinants okay but here to find the solution the determinant of that matrix right of that coefficient matrix we'll talk about the coefficient matrix should be not equals to zero should not be equals to zero also like i will write also uh, like this is useful useful for smaller system of equations uh, why because finding the de determinant for bigger matrices is like difficult right so this is used useful okay i have written it okay i will write like let me put this down useful for smaller set of equations also like uh, do like listen to this lecture very uh, like uh, what do you say concentratedly because i will talk about this uh, like not this this cause elimination method and row echelon form which are very important uh, so yeah th these are new things so previously what we were learning were mostly similar if you have already studied like 11 and 12 okay but now from now new things will come up so do listen carefully whatever i am talking about be attentive okay 
now what is the matrix inversion method so matrix inversion method is again like this one so this is also useful for smaller set of uh, i will do this this and this smaller uh, set of equations both inverse and uh, matrix inversion method basically what we talk about is we write our equation linear equation in the matrix format right ax plus b okay where x is the variable and b is the coefficient uh, a is the coefficient matrix and b is the constant matrix which is in the right hand side now if we take the inverse on both uh, sides of a a inverse and multiply so this will be a inverse a inverse times b okay a inverse times b so here if you know the inverse then obviously we can solve this but again it has to follow the same condition that a determinant of a should not be equal to 0 okay determinant of a should not be equal to 0 so this also has to uh, follow the same condition for solution to exist okay so this is also suitable for smaller set of equations because find the, finding the inverse for 4 cross 4 5 cross 4 uh, 5 cross 5 matrix is not that easy next is gauss elimination method gauss elimination method like this is useful and this can be used for larger matrices also so this can be useful so this is uh, very useful and here this also tells us about the general solution okay this also gives us information about the general solution what is general solution we will understand later on okay but uh, like by general solution i mean like if the equation has no solution if the equation has unique solution if the equation has infinitely many solutions that information also we can get from this gauss elimination method also from camera's rule also we can get okay so i will talk about that now uh like these three right all these three uh, uh rules or all these three methods of finding the solutions these are exact methods what do you mean by exact methods by exact methods i mean that whatever solution i will get that will exactly satisfy the equation okay so we'll write exact solutions oh no oh no exact solution okay so uh, now let's come to the fourth one fourth is iterative method jacobi and gauss seidel method so this is also another method that i have studied in uh, power systems through which we find the solution so this is not the this we uh, repeat it multiple times repeat this method multiple times to get our answer so this is used for large set of equations so if we have larger set of equations, obviously taking the inverse, all those things is not easy. We use Jacobi and Gauss Siegel. Okay. okay so basically this will give us a approximate solution approximate solution this will obviously not exactly satisfy the equations but this will be a very good approximation of the actual exact solution okay so yeah when there is larger number of set of equations we will use jacobi and uh, this gauss riddle obviously we will not run this over here i will talk about these three okay so in the first question we have to find the solution of the equation using kramer's rule so this is a, uh, like a three a linear, linear equations we have to find the solution using kramer's rule okay so what is the kramer's rule basically we define our matrix like this ax equals to b and a is equals to the coefficient matrix x is equals to the column matrix with variables if you have uh, like uh, learned control systems for me so this is like, just like a repetition you can 2x this okay you can 2x this then b is a column matrix with constants on the right hand side on the right hand side right hand side right so basically a column matrix basically it will have x can be written like this x1 x2 x3 and so on right okay and b can be written b1 b2 b3 okay 
so that's why it is like a column matrix itself so and uh, what about our coefficient matrix coefficient matrix will be a square matrix coefficient matrix will be a square matrix okay so basically i can write my equations like this right i can write my equations like this now if i want to convert this into the three formats whatever format it is written over here this will be something like this right so this will be 3 cross 3 because i have three equations and three unknowns right so the number of unknowns will be present over here x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 x3 in our case it was xyz so we can you can write like that also so this will be 3 cross 1 three unknowns uh, and one column and this will be also 3 cross 1 3 uh like on the right hand side three constants on the right hand side so you can write a x and b like this okay now what you do you solve right so basically what will be the value of x1 the value of x1 will be the determinant of this matrix divided by determinant of a okay the coefficient matrix now what is the determinant of this matrix basically we are finding the solution of the first uh, uh unknown right first unknown so what we do we replace the first column with the uh, this constant matrix we replace the first column with the uh, constants constant matrix okay then if you want to find the solution of second we replace the second column with the constant matrix keeping the other column same this is this is basically the coefficient matrix just with a twist coefficient matrix just with a twist and for the third uh, uh, unknown we change the third column with the constant matrix and keeping other two columns same okay and the de determinant of a should not be equals to zero okay determinant of a should not be equal to zero so this Got determinant of like this uh, is denoted like this determinant of x1 determinant of x2 determinant of x3 okay so xn equals to determinant of xn divided by d okay so basically what is d d is the determinant of a so d is determinant of a and these are changing xn like it's changing according to the d of xn okay so like let's come back to our case so i just give give you a brief about the kramer's rule how to solve for the kramer's rule basically obviously determinant has to be non-zero now one thing is there that if one thing is there if uh, dx1 dx2 dx uh, dot, 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 dxn we can go until dxn right dot dot dot, dot dxn uh, also d is not equals to zero then we have obviously unique solution okay unique solution because obviously all all the whatever uh, computations we're doing are valid so we'll get three unique solutions i mean like three uh, like one solution right one unique solution for x1 x2 and x3 okay or xn like how many number of unknown variables are there now if if okay i, I won't prove anything here i'll just uh, talk about it if dx1 dx2 dot dot dot, dot and dxn are all equals to zero okay equals to zero then we have infinite infinite solution this is a unique solution and this is infinite solution okay so wh why is this a case we are getting something 0 by 0 format okay it is something like l hospital l, l hospital format right so 0 by 0 format okay that's why uh, they will cancel try to cancel each other hence we, if we apply limits so we will get infinitely many solution okay that's why this is infinitely many solution like you can remember it like that okay i'm just try trying to see you the intuition okay i'm not proving anything here next is about if is not uh, is not equal to zero but your d is equal to zero okay determinant of coefficient matrix equals to then what you will get you will get what do you get 
you'll get no solution no solution okay you'll get no solution right so yeah these are the three cases like from from here you, you obviously won't be able to find the general solution right general solution okay basically like what can be the format of the infinite solution you won't be able to tell but with gauss uh, elimination method we will be able to tell that's why it is known as the that's why i told you that we will be able to find the general solution over there okay we, uh, when we will find infinite solution there we will understand so let's now come back to this so we have this matrix right so let me convert this into co like the, let me write the coefficient matrix the uh, variable matrix and the constant matrix One minus three, two, three, one minus two, one, one, one. Okay. Next is our uh, unknown matrix, which is simply x equals to x y z. And next is our B matrix. The constant matrix which is equal to four two six. Okay, so now like uh, what we have to find? We have to find x one, uh, x y and z, right? So what will the x? X will be simply this matrix only. I will just copy the first two columns and the coefficient. Uh, this constant matrix. And this will be. Let me check everything is recording, right? I'll have to destroy it right now. Yeah, everything is recording fine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this will determine of the coefficient matrix. So let us first compute this determinant, right? So I will just comp compute this in rough. Just compute this in rough. Uh, let me compute here. Okay. So it is one. I'm not doing any uh, any transformations or operations here. Just directly computing it on the go. One plus two minus plus three. This is three plus two. Then this is plus two three minus one. This is three plus fifteen plus four. So this is four nineteen twenty two. Okay. So our determinant is twenty two. So this is simply equals to. Twenty-two. And what about the top? What about the top? One plus two plus three into two plus twelve into two plus two minus six. So this is twelve plus. Forty-two. Uh, this is minus uh, uh, minus four into minus eight. So this is around plus four. So okay, this is forty-six, right? So uh, the determinant comes out to be forty-six over here. So if uh, this comes out to forty-six, this will be equals to twenty-three by eleven. So x is equals to twenty-three by eleven. Now let's uh, solve for the y. So same thing only. The difference will be this time. I just copy this. Okay. The difference will be that instead of the first row, first column, the second column will be copied in the dx2, right? So this is second column. Okay, and the first column is this. Okay, so uh, basically, what will be the determinant here? So, like the uh, denominator remains same. This is twenty-two only, and the numerator is. Uh, let me do the rough calculation. One, two plus uh, twelve, then minus four, to three plus two, then plus two into eighteen minus two, fourteen minus twenty plus. Thirty-two. Uh, right. So what is this? This is like minus six, and this is twenty-six. So twenty-six by twenty-two. So basically, what will be this? Twenty-six by twenty-two is simply 
थर्टीन बाई इलेवन राइट सो ट्वेंटी सिक्स बाई ट्वेंटी टू थर्टीन बाई इलेवन ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज अबाउट द सॉरी दिस इज नॉट एक्स दिस इज वाई दैट्स दैट इज द बैड हैबिट ऑफ कॉपिंग सो नेक्स्ट इज दैट सो आई विल कॉपी दीज टू कॉलम्स एंड द लास्ट कॉलम विल बी रिप्लेस विद दिस Element of A. So again, uh, doing the rough calculation. I should have done it like previously, but that's fine. One into six minus two plus three into eighteen minus two plus four into three minus one. So this is four plus sixteen to three forty eight plus eight. So this is sixty. Sixty upon twenty-two. Okay, so this will be sixty upon twenty-two. So this is thirty upon eleven. Okay, so yeah, this is the solution of this question, and this is how you solve it. Okay, so this is basically how you solve using the Kramer's method. Now let's solve using the matrix inversion method. Okay, this is much much more, more simpler. Simply, what we know, we know a, x, and b, right? I will again copy this. Okay, because this is same only a x and b are same only okay and the uh, like the uh, question is same only just we will use the matrix inversion method so we have to find the inverse okay so how to use we will use the shortcut now so basically what we will do so i will copy this okay i told you how to uh, find the inverse of a 3 cross 3 matrix okay uh, in shortcut okay basically it was the adjoint it was the adjoint right and if if we divide it by determinant it will become the inverse so basically what we do we copy the these two rows okay and paste it at the end sorry not the rows copy the two columns also the rows also we copy the two rows and paste it at the end over here okay now we got this now we cross mark the first column and the first row now we just cross multiply right we cross multiply and if you if i'm moving in this direction then i will write my results in this direction because we take the transpose right if you take the transpose obviously uh, everything will con be converted in uh, like if you were to if it was at aij it will be aji so yeah that's why so basically this is what i will do so 1 times 1 minus into minus 2 so this will become 3 fine then 1 times 2 minus into minus 3 this will become 5 Right, uh, one times two minus yeah. Then uh, minus three into minus two, which is six minus two. Six minus two is four. Six minus two is four. Six minus two is four. Then uh, we do this. This is minus two minus three, which is minus five. Then one minus two, which is minus one. Then six plus two, which is Eight, then three minus one, which is two, then uh, minus three minus one, which is minus four, then one plus nine, which is ten. Right. So uh, our matrix is something like this, and obviously we have to divide by the determinant, okay, which is one by twenty-two. Hence we'll get the a. Inverse. Okay. Basically, what was the uh, like uh, method? Here, the method was our x will be equals to a inverse b, right? A inverse of b. So basically, we have found out b a, a inverse, and we just need to matrix multiply with b. So basically, if we matrix multiply with b, just hold on a second. Let me take. This x y z into b. What is b? 
B is four to six. So simply now we will do the matrix multiplication. So this will first row will get totally multiplied. Three into four is twelve plus ten plus four into six is twenty four. So basically this times this, this times this, this times this. Done. Then minus five into four. Minus five into four is minus twenty. Minus one into two. This is minus two. Then eight into six, which is forty eight. Okay, forty eight. Yeah, correct. Now this two times four is eight only, and minus four times two is uh, minus eight only. Okay, and ten times six is plus sixty. Uh, yeah. So basically, now we'll get the direct answer. So this is what this is twenty two plus twenty four, which is forty six. Forty six by Twenty-two is twenty-three upon eleven, and this is uh, um, forty-eight minus twenty-two, which is twenty-six, which is also thirteen upon eleven, and this is sixty upon twenty-two, which is thirty upon eleven. So this is exactly the solutions that we got from our previous method using the determinant method, right? So here you can see that you got the solution twenty three by eleven, thirteen by eleven, and thirty uh, thirty by eleven. So basically the same solution only. So but this is much more easier, right? But the problem is finding the inverse. Finding the inverse is difficult. For four cos four, it will be much more difficult. We use the shortcut over here, so hence it become easier for us. Else we have to find using the minor method. Okay, that is pretty difficult. So yeah, this is how you solve this. Now let's uh, come to few uh, uh, analytical questions here. So here the question is asking, like I'm asking you, are the solutions of both equations same? Okay, are the solutions of both equations same? So this is x minus three y two uh, plus two z equals four. Three x minus uh, uh, this equals to two, and this is equals to six. And th these are the equations. Are are the solutions same? So if you observe it carefully, if you observe the two set of equations, if you observe the Two set of equations. I should write both set of equations. If you observe it carefully, what will happen here is that uh, these, right? These two are just swapped. Okay, these two are just swapped. Does it matter? If I write this first, then I write this first. Will the solutions change? X, Y, Z. No, right? If I write this first, if I write this uh, second, will the solution change? No. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So. Solutions will remain same. Solution will remain same. If if even if we swipe, if we write this first, if we write this second, it doesn't matter. But if I swipe this right, what will happen? The coefficient matrix, uh, position rows of the position will change basically. So I write the coefficient matrix from here right. So, uh, that will only change okay. But that won't change the uh, solution of the set of equation. And if the solution doesn't change, the rank also doesn't change. We don't know what rank is, but I will keep talking about rank. Okay, uh, because rank is related with the solution itself, right? So uh, rank is related with the uh, form of solution, like whether are we getting infinite many solutions or no solution or unique solution. It it depends on like the rank itself. So that's why I will try to relate with rank. Okay, so rank also doesn't change over here. Okay, next uh, again the same question: Are these two set of equations same? Solutions of both these set of equations same. So basically, what I can say is like uh, this, right? Uh, this, like we can observe that we are just multiplying two in this third equation. We are multiplying two in this third equation, and this is like we are multiplying two overall on the left hand side and the right hand side. Will it change the values of x, y, and z? Will it change it? Uh, no, right? Basically, if we are multiplying everything by two, we can also divide by two again, and like the equation is same only like the previous case. So it doesn't matter if I multiply a row by two. It won't change the solutions. So again, my solution will be same because I multiply by two overall, right? I can again divide by two. Doesn't matter. But I am multiplying by two just for some convenience. We'll understand that later. Okay. But that is a important thing. Here also my solutions will remain same. Okay. Now again, again the same question I'm asking you for the third time. 
third time is that basically are these two set of equations same so here you observe that something has vanished over here the z term has vanished what is the reasoning behind that so like if you observe these two set of equations what you will see is the summation of 1 and 2 is basically this right 2 equals to 1 plus 2 that is that is what happened or i have added the uh, second equation with the first equation okay so i have added the first equation with the second equation so i get this now will the solutions change again if you find the solution it will not change and we know this right because we apply these type of elimination techniques to find the solution obviously we apply this to find the solution right and it doesn't change the solution so obviously we know but if you find xyz here if you find xyz here the solution will be same again hence the solutions again are same so what i am trying to get at here so basically i'm trying to get at this thing so basically the valid elementary row operation so here i'm moving each row right I'm moving each row either i'm adding these rows these two rows i'm adding right this is a whole row right whole rows rows so i'm talking about elementary row operation either what i'm doing either i'm swiping two rows two rows are completely swapped okay either i'm adding two rows okay or sorry here i'm adding two rows or i'm multiplying the whole row with some constant multiple lambda or k whatever you want to say right so these things i'm doing so basically they don't change the solutions they don't change the solution hence for valid row operation valid elementary they are called as valid elementary row operations on the coefficient matrix so here what do you mean by valid by valid we mean for same solutions for i will write this in short here for to remain same okay for solutions to remain same or in bracket we don't know about this yet don't worry don't worry about this rank same okay we we'll obviously understand about this but like i have to obviously obviously like we just know the word rank and it it helps us finding the uh, like uh, behavior of the solution right type of solution what type of solution are we getting so yeah now interchange of value what are the valid element to a person interchange of i and j rows basically r i and r j okay if we interchange these two then this is valid again again multiplication of i row by non zero number lambda this should be non zero that is important lambda should be non zero basically i am changing my uh, i row I'm changing my other, so I should not write i i over here. This will be just be more messy. So, okay, no, oh no. This will, anyways. This is acting now. Okay, yeah. So R I. R i is changed to k times R i, not k lambda times R i. Okay, you can simply scale it the whole row. Okay, but here what you have to understand is the determinant changes. The determinant changes. So I will talk about this later. But here, like determinant changes. Here also the determinant changes. Okay, so again addition of lambda plus i. This doesn't change the determinant. Okay, this remains the constant. So, what are you doing? We are change. We are changing the j row with r j plus lambda times r i. Okay, okay. These are all valid uh, row operations. Anything else beyond this is not valid. Anything else beyond this is not valid. Like, I will explain. I am changing r j to k r j. Plus lambda R i, which is not valid row operation. Okay, not a valid row operation. Let me write this properly. So this is not valid, right? Not valid. 
so very big cross mark okay not very so yeah these are uh, the few things about row operations so like let's now find the solution of the equation using cos elimination method so we'll use elementary row operations as mentioned here valid elementary row operations and with the help of those we'll find the solutions of this okay using the gauss elimination method basically we are using the elimination method only uh, like uh, since like class 5 whatever doing but this time in the matrix format that's why they name it as gauss elimination method so i will just copy this and i will try to why is it called elimination method i am trying to eliminate few unknowns so first i will try to eliminate x y and i will try to only get to z i'll find the value of z then i will put the value of z here and like through that i will get y and if i find the value of y and z and i will find the value of x through this equation we'll do this then we'll understand so this is the first equation and this is the second equation and this is the third equation okay so with the with this uh, uh, set of equations right we can form a augmented matrix so uh, what is augmented matrix so first of all so like we already know what is a and b and x so these are my a b and x right we already know this so these are my a okay no these are my a b and x right these are my a b and x now through this a b and x i will form a augmented matrix so uh, what is augmented matrix augmented matrix is something like that i am trying to join two different matrices but they are exactly not same okay I am trying to join A and B. Okay, so like I should write this in small letters, else people might get confused. So this I should write in. So this is one minus three, two. I'll just copy and paste. I think I should copy and paste. And again. This is simply equals to four two six. Correct. So basically, this is known as the augmented matrix because I have joined two matrices A and B. Augmented matrix. Basically, we are just trying to see both of these together, right? That's why because if I do some operation here, this has to also be done here because we are doing the row operations. That's why we make them same. Okay. Now, what we do? We eliminate. We what should be our plan okay after forming this matrix our plan should be to eliminate 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 the elements in the matrix eliminate the elements in a systematic method in a systematic method in a okay so uh, uh, this is basically what we do so uh, how will you eliminate so how will you limit we we'll try to make as many zeros as possible and in uh, in a systematic manner man what what we we'll try to do i will explain so first i will try to remove this and these right these two i will try to remove okay basically this x and 3x i will try to remove how how will i remove i will subtract three times this equation one in the equation two and i will subtract simply this equation one from this equation three and this x will be removed so that is what i will try to do so basically what i will do what operations i have done i have done two is changed from two minus 
थ्री टाइम्स वन ओके एंड ऑल्सो थ्री इज चेंज फ्रॉम थ्री माइनस वन ओके थ्री इज चेंज फ्रॉम थ्री माइनस वन सो नाउ बेसिकली वॉट विल दिस बिकम इफ आई सब्ट्रैक्ट दिस 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 विल चेंज राइट दिस सो इफ आई If I am subtracting three times this, so this one will become zero, obviously. This one will become ten, and this one will become minus eight, and this one will become minus ten. Uh, uh, so, minus eight. and this is 10y okay and what about this what about this so if i subtract this this will be 4y this will be minus z okay 4y minus z okay and this will be 2 simply this will do and in the augmented matrix what will happen so basically right now uh, these two matrices right these two matrices are not same exactly so they are equivalent matrix so obviously my matrix will also change here but here right solutions will remain same but matrix will change so i should write matrix will change what do i mean by that matrix will change okay so basically what will happen my a uh, a a slash b right a uh, slash b this this will be equivalent this will not be exactly same this will also change what will happen basically the same operation whatever i have done over here the coefficients are changing right so here in like matrix format what operations i am doing i am changing my row 2 to row 2 minus 3 row 1 and i am changing my row 3 i am changing my row 3 Row three minus row one. Okay, so I'm changing my row three to row three minus row one. So basically, this will be one minus three, two, four. This one becomes zero, zero, four, ten, minus eight, minus one, and minus ten and two. Okay, so yeah, uh, our coefficient matrix will always always be same, but just I'm talking about the whatever row operation I've done. So next, what I will do? Next, I will try to eliminate this y, right? This y. So I'll only be left with z in this last equation. So now what? What I will do? So basically, again, right? These are three equations. So basically, now what I will do? I will not write anymore because this will just waste time. So I will multiply four by ten, okay, on this equation two, and then subtract with this, right? so this so this is not equal anymore these are same okay not equal anymore okay so yeah this is not equal to the previous one okay this sign means similar okay similar sign so i will remove this this will be zero okay basically i will write the row operation whatever i have done so what i have done is i have changed I'll change the color of this one also. Change my row three to row three uh, uh, minus four by ten row two. Okay, so four by ten times this is simply. Four and four by ten times this is simply minus three point two, right? Minus three point two. So if I subtract with this, this will become plus three point two minus one, which is two point two. So this is two point two, okay? And this is zero, obviously. And if I subtract four uh, by ten with this, uh, this will be simply minus four. So this will be six. This will be simply six, right? So basically, only one operation I am doing. Now this, right? 
this form is known as this form is known as row echelon form we'll uh, learn about this just time giving you a teaser right now okay okay 45 minutes have already gone and we have not even been through 50 percent of whatever we have tried to learn okay that is unfortunate so uh, we have to uh, like ramp up our speed so here what is this thing so i forgot to write one thing in equation format what is happening in equation format uh, okay okay i need more space i need more space i'll just make this smaller okay i'll make this smaller and also make this smaller also So basically, what will happen? So uh, like this equation, right? This will be x minus three y plus two z equals to four. This will be ten y only, and the last equation will become uh, this is zero. This will become two point two z equals to uh, six. Right? I'm change the color of this. So basically, from here you will be able to find the value of uh z right so what is that z is equals to from the last equation z is equals to 6 by 22 or uh, 2.2 which is equals to 30 by 11 that is what we got previously now uh next is y so i will put this value of z in up here and i will get the value of y so basically 10 y minus 8 into 30 by 11 equals to minus 10 okay so 10y equals to uh, this 240 minus 110 divided by 11. So y equals to y equals to 23 by 11. So y is equals to 23 by 11. Okay. Now what is my x? So uh, for finding x, obviously I, I know y, I know z. So I'll put y and z in this equation. I will find four. Uh, I'll find x. So this is how we solve systematically. So x plus sorry x minus 3 times 23 by 11 plus 2 times 30 by 11 equals to equals to 4 okay so my x will be simply equals to uh, this is 16 no hi this is 69 this is minus 60 and this is plus 44 divided by 11. Am I doing this correctly? Yes, this is correct. Only. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. This is 13 actually, sorry. My, my, my mat. This is actually 13. That is what I was thinking about. So this is 13 basically. So this will be 3 times 13 which is 39. So this is simply equals to 44. Uh, so this is minus 21 and this is 23 or oh, this was 23 by 11. I got a uh, uh, missing over there. So this is 23 by 11. So we got the uh, same solutions which, which you got earlier. So this is proven method. This is correct. Simply we're just using the elimination. Okay. But uh, in the matrix format. Now we'll do the in the matrix format. I showed you in the equation format what we used to do previously. Now we'll do the same thing in the matrix format. So for the first example, I just give you the analogy of what is happening in the actual set of equations and what we're doing in matrix format. So it is simpler to write it in matrix format. We don't need to write x, y, z every time. That's why you use the, we use the matrix format to simply systematically solve this. Okay. So what are the steps for using the Gauss elimination method? So steps, steps are, we have to form the augmented matrix. Okay. Next is we have to convert the augmented matrix into row echelon form. So what is row echelon form? Row echelon form is this one. Okay. Where as you can see, it is like a zero in the triangle. Uh, like uh, in the load triangle and uh, all other elements are uh, over there it can be zero non zero okay i will talk about the rules of row echelon form next is use back substitution to find the solution so i used back substitution so first i find the value of z then i back substitute it in the second row okay in this row 
the value of z and i found out the value of y then i back substituted the value of uh, y and z in the first equation i got the value of 4 so this is what back uh, substitution means so yeah now these are the three things uh, like now let's come to the key points key points of row echelon form so basically how to use the Gauss elimination method you know you got 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 the point now what is a row echelon form a matrix is said to be in row echelon form if any rows made com any rows uh, made completely of zeros lie at the bottom of the matrix so this is the first condition if any they, there are any rows which are completely zeros they have to lie in the bottom of the matrix in the last row of the matrix or in the towards the bottom second condition the first non zero entry of the various rows from form a staircase pattern so here if you see if you observe it carefully they are forming a staircase pattern so the first non zero entry should form a staircase pattern okay obviously you will not understand this we slowly will do more examples and then you will understand okay uh, that is the first non zero element of the k plus ith row is to the right of the first non zero entry of the kth row what do you mean by this so here right let's say this is the kth row and this is the k plus ith row okay basically the second row and the 2 plus 1 row which is the third row so here the first element in the k plus ith row okay should be in, on the right on the right of the first non zero should be on the right of the uh, first non zero element of the kth row so here 2.2 .2 is on the right of this so it is correct if 2.2 .2 was here hence this would not be in the row echelon form okay there is a zero element before this right so non zero element here so this would not be in the row echelon form slowly we'll do, do more examples we'll understand but this is the main definition and both of them both of these need to be satisfied both of these need to be satisfied so basically what will happen basically let's say if i have a matrix like this like staircase pa pattern can be anything 1 2 3 5 0 2 5 6 then 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 0 0 okay so i have zeros at the end okay and your staircase pattern is like this it's a staircase right it is like a step sudden change okay here so this is like a staircase right this is like a staircase so this follows a staircase pattern so this is a this is in the row echelon form okay now if i take the same matrix what i will do i will just interchange the last two rows okay i'll just interchange them one two three five 0 2 5 6 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 okay so basically what is happening i am going just before this non zero elements right just before this non zero element so i will again follow the non zero elements so i am following the non zero elements this is a staircase fine now here here right at this point i don't have any non zero elements so i will go towards the end and then i will follow the non zero element so is this staircase this is not staircase right this is not staircase this is this is definitely not staircase. I'm going here and then I have to go inside. Staircase doesn't work like, work like this. It is like something this. It should if it go on like this, this would have been a staircase. But it can't be like this. It can't be like this. Okay. That's why this is not in the row echelon form. Okay. Row echelon form. So basically, uh, these conditions are there that if there is any zero, it must be the uh, uh, must be the last row if not shift the zero row to the uh, last row by row elementary transformation so i meant zero row here if there is any zero row it must be last row if not shift the zero row to the last row by row elementary transform transformation right okay so basically this zero right which is not the last row so it will shift this in the last row okay so that is the th thing the number of zero before a non-zero elements of each row is less than the number of uh, such zeros before a non-zero element in the next row uh, let me read the point the number of zeros before a non-zero elements of each row 
बिफोर द नॉन जीरो एलिमेंट ऑफ जीरो इज लेस दैन द नंबर ऑफ सच जीरोज बिफोर नॉन जीरो एलिमेंट इन द नेक्स्ट रो सो है वट डू दे मीन सो दे मीन दैट दिस सो नंबर ऑफ जीरोज बिफोर दिस टू इज वन ओके ओनली वन जीरो इज प्रेजेंट ऑफ एयर नाउ इफ आई गो टू द नेक्स्ट रो हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ जीरोज आई हैव आई हैव ओके आई मेड ए मिस्टेक ओवर एयर एक्चुअली दिस वुड बी लाइक दिस सॉरी दिस विल गो ऑन लाइक दिस दिस विल कवर द दिस नॉन जीरो एलिमेंट नॉट द जीरो एलिमेंट ओके so uh, again sorry like sorry for the mistake now here if you read this the number of zero before a non zero element of each row is less than the number of zero of such zeros uh, before a non zero element in the next row so here if i see this uh, second row i have one zero before this two one zero before this two and if i see the second row i have three zeros before this one so it is correct, telling correct so number of zeros before uh, before this non zero element is one only and in the next row the number of zeros is 3 which is more than one it should be always more than the previous row how many number of zeros i had okay uh, then only it will follow the row echelon format okay here what do you see here if i see number of zeros before the non zero element here i don't have any non zero element so number of zeros is 4 okay here i have 3 this is not this is not following the row echelon format this is not following the row echelon format this is three number of zeros before the non zero element and this is four okay so yeah it should it should not be three over here it can't be three okay hence this condition is not satisfying now for converting a matrix into row echelon form, uh, form only elementary row operation has to be used so basically these are few points so these are not 3 4 5 actually these are actually few points you should change it to i okay so uh, basically these are three points that for, for converting a matrix into row echelon format we use only elementary row operations okay uh, as we saw right we use elementary row operations to convert this into row echelon format initially this was not in the row echelon format so uh, yeah basically gauss elimination method is you uh, like uh, help us to find the solutions and for using the gauss elimination method we have to uh, like convert the matrix into row echelon format so this is the first thing now let's take a few examples from there also we'll understand it more uh better that which ones are in the row echelon format and, and which one aren't in the so here uh, which of the following matrices are in row echelon format so here is this in the row echelon format so how we can understand here this is the first row and the number of zero elements before the non zero element is 1 here how many zero element we have two so this this is correct this is correct okay and uh on the left of this and on the down of this everything is zero so this is also correct so hence this is a this is in the row echelon format this is correct okay this is correct uh, like or you can understand from here also the all rows row of zero should lie in the uh, in the last end and obviously the first non zero element should form staircase so if you, if you observe here so this is forming like a staircase right this form like a staircase so this is fine now what about this this is not fine right? this is not fine because the zero row is at the top instead of the bottom okay and here how many zero i have before the non zero element 2 how many zero i have before the non zero element 1 again this is reducing this should not reduce this should increase again if i draw the staircase pattern this will be something like this this is not staircase right this is not staircase so this is not in the row echelon format okay now let's come back to this so here this first row is completely non zero fine here how many zeros i have One zero before the non-zero element one, which is fine because number of zeros is increasing. Again, how many zeros I have before this three, which is two. Number of zeros is again increasing, which is fine. So this has uh, satisfied the condition. I have, don't have any rows of zeros, okay. And obviously, I can see that in the bottom of this and to the left of this, this is all zero, okay. Uh, so if I draw the staircase, right? If I draw the staircase this time, so this will be something like this. So again, this is following the staircase pattern, okay. This is following the staircase pattern. Pattern. So, yeah, this is correct. This is in the row echelon format. Now let's go to the fourth one. So, if I see over here, I have a rows of zero, which is not at the bottom. Again, I I can directly cross cross over it. If it not if it is not at the bottom, th this is directly gone. Okay. So this is not in the row echelon format. Okay. But let's also confirm other things. So here, I have a non-zero element. Before this, I have one zero. Fine. But here, I have four zeros before any any element like four zeros only. Okay. and here i have no zero so number of zeros is here it is 
increasing that is fine but here it is reducing again that is also another condition for not in the row echelon format okay now if i draw the staircase format so not the staircase if i draw the try to draw the staircase this will be something like this which is definitely not looking like a staircase this is definitely not looking like a staircase okay now let's go go for the fifth one so the fifth one is simply this okay so here what do you see uh the zeros are at the bottom fine and that is satisfying now the number of zeros before the non zero elements are increasing as i move down each row that is also fine okay and here i have all zeros before this element okay all zeros before this element this is called the pivot we will understand pivot just in the next uh, slides so this is called the pivot okay if it is in the row echelon format these elements right these elements are called the pivots because what do you see the first non zero element of the of a particular row if it is in the row echelon format is known as the pivot so this two is a pivot element and on the left of this pivot element on, on the bottom of this pivot pivot element all elements should be zero okay and obviously up here all uh, this minor right excluding this row and this column this minor only this should also be completely filled with zeros then only this is a pivot okay so yeah this is in the row echelon format we can see okay also you if you can draw the staircase you can observe yeah even though the stair here is quite uh, downward okay very down but still this is a staircase okay so here right this is not row echelon this is not row echelon but can we convert this into row echelon yes we can okay we will understand we will do this obviously with elementary transformation elementary row transformations and we will convert this into row echelon uh, in the next few examples okay so uh, basically uh, what i told you is that what is a pivot i try to give you example right this two is a pivot over here this two is a pivot okay why it is a pivot to the left of this and to the bottom of this everything is zero and this matrix is also zero this three also to the left of this and to the bottom of this everything is zero and this sub matrix is also zero sub matrix we know right sub matrix we know this is also zero okay excluding this row and excluding this uh, column okay so yeah this is the case so now let's read a key point if a matrix is in row echelon form then the first non zero entry of each row is called a pivot as i explained okay and the columns in which the pivots appear are called pivot columns here this is a pivot column this is whole thing is a pivot column this whole thing is a pivot column so basically in this case right the c4 uh, c3 and c4 are called the called the pivot columns okay so yeah this is uh, also very important and here number how many number of pivots i have i have two pivots okay basically number of pivots will be equals to total order if if it is in row echelon format first of all if it has to be in the row echelon format okay it has to be in the row echelon format if it is in the row echelon format then the number of pivots will be equals to uh the uh, total order of the matrix minus the number of zero rows okay i have two zero rows so order is 4 4 minus 2 is 2 so here as you can see we have two pivots okay if it is in the row echelon format okay so uh basically in short what i should write pivot is as i as i was explaining earlier that to the left all elements is it recording right yeah this is what all elements all elements should be zero zero again the same thing to the bottom of the pivot element i'm talking about the pivot element right pivot element to the bottom <coughs> i 
all elements should be zero okay also to the uh, like uh, on the left hand side in the downward direction the sub matrix sub matrix sub matrix okay what will the sub matrix i will just talk about the sub matrix so this is the sub matrix right just copy this i will just uh, what i will do i will just paste this and i will just make the size smaller okay i will try to also make it smaller here also sub matrix right? what is the sub matrix here excluding this this right this this is a sub matrix for this particular pivot so here this is a sub matrix one sub matrix okay and again we have another sub matrix for the second pivot which is this sub matrix no not this this sub matrix right this sub matrix okay sub matrix should be null okay sub matrix should be null because all elements should be zero basically or i should write all elements again zero basically on to um, on towards the left everything should be zero basically that is the crux of this uh, like pivot elements right so yeah that is what i try, i am trying to explain i have you have understood let's read more about pivot so like like this is the basically pivot i you got the point right so this is two is a pivot why because to the left of this everything is zero to the bottom of this everything is zero and the sub matrix is also zero but first it has to be in the row rational format then only i i will uh, start fi for finding pivots okay and why is pivot important we will understand next is this three so for this three basically to the left of this everything is zero to the bottom of this everything is zero and here everything is sub matrix and which is all made up of made up of all zeros so again this is a valid pivot okay so yeah next i don't have a pivot because pivot has to be obviously non zero so pivot is non zero obviously <laughs> that is important pivot is non zero uh, okay pivot is non zero now next is a matrix is in reduced row echelon form if okay like now we are uh, we are reading about the reduced row echelon form what do you mean by reduced row echelon form so this is we are reading about the reduced row echelon form and why is this important we'll understand this later reduce row echelon form just try to know the terminology if it is in row echelon form obviously for it to be reduced row echelon form it has to be first row echelon form okay all the pivots are equal to 1 so here all the pivots are equal to 1 if they are equal to 1 then it is in the uh, it is in the reduced row echelon form all the entries in the pivot columns except the pivots themselves are equal to 0 basically the pivot columns right these are the pivot columns all the entries should be 0 here what you can see this is a pivot column right so here all the entries are 0 this is a pivot column This is a pivot column here. All the entries is zero. So, anyways, that that was the definition of pivot itself because, like, on the bottom of this, everything should be zero. But on the top of this, everything can be non-zero also. Okay, but okay, as it is zero, this is fine. This is fine, right? Uh, yeah. But if it was a non-zero, then it wouldn't have been in the in the reduced row echelon format. And why is it important? We'll understand this later. But just wanted to clear up a bit of terminology. So, few observations we got that the number of pivots was equal to the number of unknowns okay uh, what is this observation okay we didn't got this observation like if you see this here right if i copy this matrix in which we got the unique solution here right if i copy this augmented matrix tell me how many pivots do we have this this, this is in the row echelon format right so this is the first observation that this is in the row echelon format and how many pivots i have i have these right this is the pivot this is the pivot and this is the pivot right this is the pivot so basically uh, this is not in the reduced row echelon format that is fine but for a pivot all elements to the left and to the bottom should be zero this is zero fine all elements to the left and the bottom is zero and also the sub matrix should also be zero fine all elements to the left and the bottom should be zero fine okay so these these three are pivot okay uh, and how many pivots were? i have i have three and the number of unknowns i have what how many i have i have 3 right x y z i had 3 so in this case number of pivots is 
and number of unknowns equals to 3 and these two are equal x y z and papers so if these two are equal we'll always get a unique solution that is the basically crux of the gauss elimination method okay uh, crux of the gauss elimination method so pivot also tells us about the rank of the matrix okay it's also important so uh, yeah let's we'll talk about rank later but let's find the solution of using the gauss elimination method of this particular equation so here right uh, this is obviously not unique okay there is some twist in it so if you do this you will be able to understand so i, I will try to do this I will try to reduce this in the row echelon format, but now in a little fast manner. I will directly, directly write the uh, augmented matrix this time. Okay, so if I write the augmented matrix, is this lacking a bit? Uh, hello, is this lacking? No, fine. So if I write the augmented matrix, one. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, 5, 1, 2, 0, and 9. Okay. So now I will try to convert this in the uh, row echelon format. So for, for converting it into the row echelon format, what I will do, I will write row 2 into 2 uh, not 2 row 2 minus 2 row 1 and row 3 is changed to row 3 minus row 1 so this will be 1 1 1 1 2 0 1 uh, this is 2 times this so this will be minus 1 this will be 1 now this is simply subtraction this is 0 this is 1, this is minus 1, and this is 7, okay? Now, what does this become, basically? So basically now, uh, what I uh, what I will I try, try, try to do is, basically I will uh, subtract these two, right? Subtract these two. Like I will uh, subtract these two because I, I want to make a zero over here. So I, I will try to only convert this in the row echelon format. Okay, that's why. So basically I want two zeros over here, right? And then one zero over here, then no zero over here. So that is basically my aim. So I will try to, what I will try to do, I will do, simply do subtraction. Okay, I will simply do, I will change row three to row three minus row two. Okay. This is simply two one minus one two one minus one and then one then this is zero zero this is two okay what is happening okay so this is also becoming zero itself this is not two sorry this is also becoming zero and this is equal to six now there is a problem over here I converted this into the rotational format. Okay, this is in the rotational format. No issues, right? This is correct rotational format, right? This is in the rotational format. Now I have to stop over here. Rotational format. But what is the problem right now? The problem is this, right? What I, what I previously did, I tried to equate. This was 2.2 previously and this was uh, 6. Yeah, this was 6 also. 2.2 equals to 6. I tried 2.2 Z equals 6. But now, what is this telling me? This is telling me that 0 times z equals to 6, okay, which is 0 equals to 6, which is not possible, not possible. This is like the first lecture, deja vu, right? Back over again. So, which is not possible. So, obviously, we don't have any solution, no solution, no solution, okay. But can we observe that how many pivots we have right now? How many pivots we have? We have this one pivot right because to the bottom of this everything is zero and to the left of this nothing is this obviously it is zero here this is another pivot 
but i don't have any third pivot this pivot has to be non zero element this is not third pivot this is the pivot this is a pivot because to the left of this everything is zero and obviously in the bottom i don't have anything so we have pivot here but the pivot is not inside this coefficient matrix pivot is inside the uh, this constant matrix so this is a pivot i write this is a pivot this is a pivot and this is a pivot okay so i should write also another condition for to write over there is that i have three pivots but one pivot lie on the like uh, one pivot lie outside the coefficient matrix outside the coefficient matrix like these are the terminologies main thing concept we got over here zero is not equal to 6 that is not possible zero is equal to 6 that is not possible right so one pivot lie outside the coefficient matrix if it lie lies outside the coefficient matrix uh that means these here right number of pivot is lesser than the number of uh, uh, rows whatever we have inside the coefficient matrix so here right i should also write i should also write another point all pivots should lie inside the coefficient matrix okay inside the coefficient matrix so yeah basically this right this is inconsistent set of solutions inconsistent set of solutions inconsistent and in this case we have no solution inconsistent okay we have no solution basically okay so uh basically uh the right most column has a pivot this time which uh, uh which shouldn't happen right okay if the right most column has a pivot then it is a problem so here right in this case the right most column didn't had a pivot here okay uh, not in this case where we had unique solution here right the right most column wasn't the pivot it was the uh, column before that okay so this you can say also that inside the coefficient matrix or you can say the right most column should not be a pivot so i will i will write that okay here if right most column has a pivot then no solution if right most column has a pivot then we have no solution because why why is this a case if the right most column has a pivot if like anyways if i have four columns if the right most column has a pivot then to the left of them everything should be zero again if everything is zero then all the un like zero times the unknown zero times x zero times y zero times z is zero okay zero is equals to any non zero number which is again not possible which is hence no solution that's why if the right most column has a pivot that means we don't have any solution i hope you understand that we don't have any solution because it is in consistent set of uh, equations and zero is can't be equal to some non zero value okay we have done something wrong basically the solutions uh, uh, the set of equations are uh, give no solution okay so equations are inconsistent hence the solution does not exist okay so uh, this is the concept of no solution now let's come to the concept of infinite solution because only one is left so we only do that so here i should write here i should actually write uh, no instead of this i should write i should write that this statement right rightmost column is not a pivot where did you go i will bring this in the bottom doesn't have a pivot okay 
okay right mouse column doesn't have a pivot anymore so this condition has to be satisfied then if the number of pivots is equal to number of unknowns then it has a unique solution okay we'll talk also talk about the rank so basically rank uh, is equal to the number of pivots itself okay so let's now talk about this so again i will copy this and write the coefficient matrix and again i'll convert this into the row echelon format so again let me copy this a bit So basically this will become one 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 two two three one five one two zero and three. Okay. So now again I will convert this into the row echelon format. So for converting this into row echelon format, I will I will apply the same uh, like operations because this coefficient matrix, if you observe carefully, they are same only like the previous one is it or no yeah they're same only only the right hand side the constant matrix constant matrix has changed so basically what i'll do i'll change my row 2 to row 2 minus 2 row 1 and i'll change my row 3 to row 3 minus row 1 so my what have i done here so this right this is equals now this right this i should write as similar okay just hold on a second just hold on a second yeah basically i have uh, finished the uh, writing so basically when two matrices a and b are equal when the number of rows and number of columns are same okay and their corresponding entries all of them are same then obviously they are equal equal means everything is same everything is same now equivalent when they're equivalent when they're equivalent when the two matrices a and b uh, basically, uh, the number of rows, rows and columns are same. That is uh, same only. But here, the corresponding entries can be made. Okay, I will just uh, color this in. Other. Okay, I will just. Can be made same using elementary transformation. Elementary row or column. Like whatever transformation we did in the row, right? We can do the same thing in the column also. I will summarize it later on. But this is the main crux that if you do the elementary, or like for now, row transformation, whatever you did, right? Here whatever we did in this case right so these mat matrix and the starting matrix here both of them are equivalent to each other okay because if i do the elementary row uh, elementary uh, transformations i will be able to get to that or if i do elementary transformations on that i will be able to get back to this okay hence they are equivalent and they are not equal because all the entries are not same here and here the entries are not same they are different they are not equal but they are equivalent okay that is important so that is what i, I wanted to say to you so yeah let's come back to this okay where was i i was here right so now let me like i was doing the row transformations so again the equivalent form of this is simply this is one 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 this is two times this or this is zero this is one this is minus one this is zero this is one this is minus one okay and again we, we get the same thing again and this is two this is one this is minus okay just hold on a second uh yeah this is minus one uh, am i doing this correctly no i'm just simply subtracting right so this will be one only so now again right what i will do to uh, make this uh, like in the row format so i will do the same i will apply the same operations just like the pre previous case i will change by row three to row 3 minus row 2 okay so what will my equivalent matrix become this will be simply first row will be same 1 1 1 1 1 1 and 2 okay then 0 1 minus 1 then 1 then 0 0 0 and then this also 0 because I am sim simply subtracting now what is the interesting fact over here the interesting fact is these two 0 times z equals to 0 i get 0 equals to 0 which is which is true 0 is equals to 0 so it is true so if it is true that means that we don't have any inconsistency over here so basically but what are the variables here the variables are infinite basically here right we don't have any pivot so number of pivots is less than the number of unknowns this time number of pivots is less than the number of unknowns 
so basically this is a pivot right this is a pivot this is a pivot but we don't have any pivot in the last row so basically no pivot in the last uh, column basically but we don't have a pivot in the last column as well and in the this column the column before that as well we don't have any pivot right hence zero is zero hence we will get infinite solutions okay so this is always true always true okay so uh, basically uh, what is the thing over here so basically if number of pivots uh, which is denoted like r which is, which is also known as rank right now is less than the number of unknowns then we have infinite solutions so in this case we have two pivots only and it is less than the number of unknowns hence we have infinite solutions okay previously we had three pivots but the last pivot was at the uh, but the pivot yeah last pivot was at the last column okay on rightmost column which is uh, which is on on the constant uh, uh, constant column so which is uh, which gives us an uh, what do you say no solution which gives us no solution okay so yeah that is the thing about this so basically now right so this third column is also known as free variable okay here we can choose this variable any value and we will be able to solve this so basically uh, that's why this is also called a nullity that's why this is also called a nullity so I'll, i will write this statement and then i will again come back right so i have written like the points here what i have written the column before the rightmost column and the rightmost column don't have any pivots okay like as we are observing here the the third column and the fourth column they don't have any pivots here it corresponds to z in this case the uh, the column before the third most column that is here it means here the it is the third column right third column third column corresponds to z which we call a free variable which is a free variable so z right is a free variable why is it call, called a free variable because we can choose any value for this variable as we want because 0 times z is 0 always which is always true so i can cho choose z equals to 1 i can choose z equals to minus 1 i can choose z equals to minus 3i 2i whatever okay uh, any any com complex number also any real number uh, any complex number uh, i can also choose right so basically if i choose z like that okay H hence it is free to choose hence it is called a free variable free variable so let z equals to any value alpha if z is equals to alpha then what will my my y become so basically i will replace my z in this equation so this is what this is one times y minus z equals to one so one times y is y minus z z is alpha equals to one so what will be my y y will be one plus alpha okay y will be my one plus alpha now what is my x x is i will replace x in this equation so basically x plus y plus z equals to 2 x plus y plus z equals to 2 so if x plus y plus z equals to 2 x plus y plus z equals to 2 so basically x plus y is 1 plus alpha and z is alpha equals to 2 so x equals to 1 minus 2 alpha x equals to 1 minus 2 alpha right yeah so your x is 1 minus 2 alpha y is uh, 1 plus alpha and z is alpha now we can write this in the uh, uh, matrix format right so basically we can write this in the matrix format how we can write in this in the matrix format x is a column vector okay this is a solution basically which is uh, x is 1 minus 2 alpha 1 plus alpha and uh, this is alpha right this is alpha okay this is alpha now if this is alpha now what is the case now basically i can rewrite this in uh, form of two solutions let me just uh, hold the camera a bit let me just check if everything is recording right yeah this is recording and yeah this is recording fine so like what i, I was talking is i will write this as a summation of two solutions what i will write i will write this equals to 110 plus minus 2 alpha alpha and alpha okay now i can take the alpha as common this will be alpha minus 2 1 1 i will just copy this in the next uh, page
ओके सो बेसिकली दिस इज हाउ वी कैन राइट इट नाउ दिस टू हैव नेम्स दिस टू हैव नेम्स सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन ओके एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड दिस इज कॉल्ड द लाइक कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री सोल्यूशन यू कैन से और द सोल्यूशन ऑफ द होमोजिनियस इक्वेशन ओके सोल्यूशन ऑफ होमोजिनियस इक्वेशन और ऑल्सो नोन एज द नल स्पेस सोल्यूशन ऑफ होमोजीनियस इक्वेशन वॉट डू मीन बाई होमोजीनियस आई विल टेल यू ओके डोंट गो इन टू टू मच ऑफ डिटेल्स वी लर्न दिस लेटर ऑन डोंट वरी होमोजीनियस सिस्टम ऑफ इक्वेजन्स ऑल्सो दिस इज कॉल्ड नल स्पेस वील अंडरस्टैंड दिस नल स्पेस इन मच मच डिटेल डोंट वरी अबाउट दिस ओके नल स्पेस दिस हैज पर्टिकुलर नेम्स वील अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट दिस लेटर ऑन ओके सो बेसिकली एक्स कैन बी रिटर्न एस एक्स पी प्लस एक्स एच नो वाई इज दिस कॉल्ड अ पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन सो इफ आई पुट माई वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन एंड वाई इक्वल्स टू वन ओके एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन इन दिस इक्वेजन आई विल पुट एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन वाई इक्वल्स टू वन जेड इज इक्वल्स टू वट जीरो फाइन सैटिस्फाइंग बिकॉज इट वॉज वन वन जीरो इफ आई पुट हेयर एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन वाई इक्वल्स टू वन दिस इज फाइव अगेन जेड इज इक्वल्स टू सैटिस्फाइंग इफ आई पुट एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन वाई इक्वल्स टू वन दिस इज सैटिस्फाइंग ओके दिस सैटिस्फाइंग राइट नाउ दैट इज वाई दिस इज अ पर्टिकुलर सोल्यूशन बिकॉज जस्ट वन वन जीरो इफ आई पुट दे आर ऑल सैटिस्फाइंग नाउ वट डू मीन बाई होमोजीनी सोल्यूशन वट डू मीन बाई होमोजीनी सिस्टम सोल्यूशन होमोजीनी सिस्टम ऑफ सोल्यूशन इज वन द कॉन्स्टेंट मैट्रिक्स इज जीरो द कॉन्स्टेंट मैट्रिक्स इज मेड जीरो सो बी मैट्रिक्स इज मेड जीरो बेसिकली इट इज अ सोल्यूशन फॉर एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो ओके फॉर ए एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो नाउ इफ द राइट हैंड साइड हैज जीरो इफ द राइट हैंड साइड इज ऑल जीरो देन वट शुड आई पुट इन द एक्स वाई एंड जेड सो एक्स वाई एंड जेड आई शुड पुट लाइक दिस माइनस टू माइनस टू वन वन सो इफ आई पुट माइनस टू वन वन दिट इज सैटिस्फाइंग दिस इज गोइंग टू जीरो इफ आई टू पुट माइनस टू वन वन सो दिस इज माइनस टू माइनस फोर प्लस थ्री एंड प्लस वन जीरो अगेन माइनस टू वन सो माइनस टू एंड माइनस प्लस टू इज जीरो अगेन सो या दिस इज अबाउट द होमोजीनियस सोल्यूशन ओके दैट इज वाई दिस नोन एज द सोल्यूशन फॉर एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो एंड दिस इज नोन एज द नल स्पेस विल लर्न मोर अबाउट दिस डोंट वरी विल लर्न मोर अबाउट दिस इन डिटेल ड्यूरिंग द फैक्टर स्पेस चैप्टर ओके जस्ट गिव यू ब्रीफ ओवर व्यू ऑफ दिस और कॉन्स्टेंट मैट्रिक्स वी मेड इट जीरो ओके सो या लाइक वट आर द ऑब्जर्वेशन नाउ द ऑब्जर्वेशन इज नंबर ऑफ पी वर्ड्स विच इज आर विच इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू द रैंक ओके नंबर ऑफ पी वर्ड्स इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू द रैंक ऑफ द मैट्रिक्स शुड इज इफ इट्स लेस दैन नंबर ऑफ अनोन्स ओके इन दिस केस दिस वर थ्री एंड द पी वर्ड्स वर हाउ मेनी टू देन वील गेट इन फाइनल सोल्यूशन ऑल्सो नंबर ऑफ फ्री वेरियबल्स विच इज द नंबर ऑफ variables which i which which i can take any values is m minus r basically number of unknowns minus number of p words okay so uh, this is also known as a nullity so just these are terminologies you have to remember this terminologies i will slowly uh, tell you the definitions later on because obviously i can't tell you all at once right i can't tell you all at once we have to learn other things right so uh, uh, this is the thing about the uh, this three equations so basically from the next lecture i will uh, start with rank and more things about row echelon format so this lecture has already gone wrong so we'll start with row echelon format and rank in the next lecture and we'll learn more about rank okay the methods to find rank in using two two methods right how to find rank okay and also we'll do questions on that so yeah i hope you like this lecture if you did uh, tell me and if you have any more doubts you can ask in the doubt section so i will see you in the next lecture thank you for watching